And we're back again. How's everybody doing this evening? This is L.A. Kendrick, bringing you part two of Forfeit Your Soul. Let's jump right into it. Last we were speaking, and how the story goes, Antoine was going to look at the footage after coming back from his business trip and the children being back as well. And he just wanted to check on what was going on in the house, you know, security tapes, just to check and make sure that there were no break-ins, say the wife wasn't home or what have you. And so the, he doesn't do it right away. He goes out and he does some yard work and yeah, he's still hands-on with anything that goes on in his house, no matter how much money he's made. So he's, you know, he's still a pretty hands-on guy. Does a little bit with the lawn, washes the car, the kids are out playing. But then, you know, the kids get tired and they go in and they want lunch. And so the 13 year old goes in first and he approaches his mother and she's just, you know, in the bathroom mirror, just looking at herself. So the 13 year old asks his mom, Jeanette, you know, let's, can you make me something to eat? I'm hungry. And she doesn't say anything, and he, he says, Mom, can you make me something to eat? I'm kind of hungry. Dad's out doing the yard work. And she doesn't respond. She looks more agitated than anything, but she doesn't respond to him as if, you know, he's not there. So he touches her and he says, Mom, can you? And then she yells at him. No, damn it. I got better things to do. And when she looks at him, her face is completely contorted and misfigured. And it scares the 13 year old. And he just jumps back and he runs out of the bathroom. She looks back into the, she, she collects her thoughts and she looks back into the mirror and she realizes that maybe she was a little bit overboard, a little bit of a, a little overly aggressive, but doesn't change her stance on anything. So the 13 year old is, is standing out in the hallway and uh, he's going down the stairs. He's trying to he's trying to collect himself. He's trying to collect his thoughts. And suddenly, he's shoved by an unseen force down the stairs. And he tumbles down. Luckily, he's breaking his fall on the way down, so he doesn't you know injure himself. He has a few scrapes or whatnot. And he yells out, and the dad can hear him outside. And the dad comes running in, and so does the other brother. He's 11. So the other brother runs in with the dad and they look and they, you know, help him up. And then Antoine yells to Jeanette, you know, what, what happened? And she comes out and she says, I don't know. I don't know. What do you mean? And he just fell. And then the 13 year old says, no, something pushed me. And they all just kind of look at him and he's like, something pushed me down these stairs. I was shoved from behind. You got to believe me, I wouldn't make this up. Something shoved me. And they're kind of, everybody's looking at each other and looking at him and they're trying to figure out what could have possibly pushed him that hard down the stairs. And then they help him up. And um, he says, well, What's the? Are you okay? Are you fine? And he pick, he stand when he stands up. He's like, yes, sir, I'm fine. And he checks him for bruises and you know presses on his body to see if anything has any tender spots or any sore spots. And he appears to be okay. Everything is okay with him. So he says, I'm still kind of kind of hungry, Daddy. You know, can we can we go in the kitchen? You know. And apparently he wants to tell his dad what he saw as far as his mom's face is concerned. So, the three boys. The 11 year old, the 13 year old, and the dad, when I say boys, I mean the men, they go into the kitchen. And the 13 year old was explaining to his dad what he saw in his mom's face and her behavior. He said how her face contorted and just changed like she was possessed by something. And the dad, you know, he's pretty open minded about a lot of stuff, so he's kind of like, huh, you know, he doesn't take what he says lightly. But as soon as he goes to address the wife, the wife comes in and she's all made up like she's going somewhere. 
So the dad said, I guess you have a hot date. And she says, yes, what of it? With a real sassy and saucy attitude. And he said, what about the boys? Are you going to fix them anything to eat or, or do I have to do everything around here? And he just said that just to test her and see where her head was at. And she said, well, you take care of it. You do it. Superman. And the dad's like, okay, I will. And she said, well, I don't have time for this. And she storms out the house and she jumps in the car and she drives off as the dad and the sons are, the sons are more in shock. The dad is like, he's used to that because he's used to that treatment from her acting that way in the, in the first place. So it's nothing unusual for him. So she, she drives off and she's looking through her rearview mirror and she's getting that feeling of excitement again because she's going to meet her suave, dynamic, new beau. But as she looks in the rearview mirror, she sees somebody sitting in the back seat and then she looks in the back seat and there's nobody there. So she pulls over and she takes a deep breath and she's trying to collect her thoughts because strange things are starting to happen to her. So she shakes it off and she continues to drive on to her next destination, which is her, um, her luncheon with her new guy that she's cheating with. He gets there, she gets there, he's already got a table reserved for them and he's sitting there and he's, he, he waves her over and she goes and sits down and they yuck it up and laugh and uh, she's just really happy and excited and full of energy and he's the same, has the same energy. I want to do something a little bit off about him this time. And um, he's telling her he wants to take her away from her misery and give her a better life and she's all too happy to oblige him. Now she's starting to get more fatigued for some strange reason as if the life force is being drawn out of her. But she shakes it off and she just attributes it, attributes it to something like she's just not had enough sleep. And her beau is just like, are you okay? You, you're not, you don't like you're feeling too well. So he gives her, he tells her to drink some water. She drinks some water. And uh, he says, well, I have this, this, this trip planned. You know, we got a yacht and we're going out to, uh, we're going out to the Bahamas. Would you care to join us? And we want to go from the Bahamas to Bermuda. And she says, well, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm with that. I'm with that. And he says, uh, your girlfriends have already been invited, so they already know. So basically, guys can call it a girl's trip if you need a, if you need a cover story to get out. And she's like, well, okay. Yeah, I'm with it. So he being the adventurous provocator that he is, he tells her, he incites her to go into the bathroom for a sexual liaison. And they go in and get all hot and heavy in the bathroom, having sex on the on the uh, the sink, all passionate and whatnot. And he tells her, "Okay." After he's done with her, he says, "Okay, so you just make sure that you show up, baby. We're gonna have a ball. After after that that trip, you won't ever want to look back at anything in your past ever again. I got you, baby." And he leaves. He, he cleans himself up a little bit, and then he washes his hands and he leaves. She's still sitting in there trying to clean herself up and excited about what's happening. And she's thinking, oh, my God, this is the excitement that I've been missing. You know, forget my marriage, forget my kids, forget everything. I'm willing to throw it all away for this guy. And then she looks in the mirror and she looks, she sees that she's starting to look a little bit ragged, like she's aging a little bit. And so she goes out of the bathroom. She leaves the bathroom and she gets in her car and she leaves and she goes back home. It's a little bit later now, it's about six o'clock. So the husband is and the sons are had ordered out and the husband doesn't even address her. The kids say, hey mom, how are you doing? And she just doesn't even speak to the kids and the kids are like, dad, what's wrong with mom? And the dad said, well, she's going through something and uh, it is what it is. So. The dad goes into the room and tells the, you know, he addresses her. He says, hey, you know what? Whatever you got going on between me and you, that's fine. But you're not going to treat these boys like this. I tell you what, we're going to sign those divorce papers and we're going to end this. Because I'm not going to continue to go through this with you. 
And so Jeanette's like, well, fine. I, I don't want this situation anymore anyway. I didn't want this to begin with. And he said, you should have told me this from the beginning because that was never on the menu. You never even spoke of anything like that about not being happy with me. You just started this a couple of years back and I just kept trying to hang on. And I was accepting your deceitful ways and things like that, but I'm, I'm just completely done with you. And out of nowhere, they hear a, sc a loud scream from the other part of the house, so they both run out. And then they find the 11-year-old on the ground with a, a huge handprint across his face as he's been slapped. And he's looking at the son, he said, and, the, and Antoine says, what the hell is going on in this house? What's going on? And then the son says, something slapped me, something hit me. And I don't know what it was, and I, don't, I didn't see it. So... Antoine is really shocked and he's really puzzled. She, Jeanette's just looking like, eh, whatever. And she continues on about her way. Goes upstairs, gets ready for bed, and she has an early sleep. So what Antoine does, he's going to review the video footage now because he really wants to see what's going on. He, had, he has to figure out what's going on now. But he's also going to, he thinks that there's something uh, extra going on. So he's, he's thinking that these kids are making it up in a way, but then he really realized his kids are pretty honest kids and good kids. So he's really, you know, just want to see what's going on. And uh, so he goes and looks at the footage. He goes look at the video footage from the end of the timestamp from when, you know, he's timestamping from when the first kid said that he was hit, I mean, pushed down the stairs and when the 11 uh, year old was slapped and the, the, the bruises on his face. But before he does that, he gets some ice and he uh, uh, tends to his son and makes sure that his son is okay. And then from there he goes to the, the room where he has uh, his, his, his office where he can look at the video footage and see what's going on. Because there's something sinister going on in his home and he just doesn't have any idea what that could possibly be. I'm gonna leave it right there, folks. Gonna bring you part three or forfeit your soul. We'll have that ready for you Friday. Remember, like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel. Give me that thumbs up. Again, this is something to, this is a hobby of mine and uh, it's been copyrighted 2020. So, you know, you guys, please take advantage of it. It's something to tide you over and keep your spirits up. I'm a writer. I have work already out on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, Ingram, Nuke, Kindle. Again, feel free to to do, you know, to leave those comments because it really does help. If you and if you want to donate, you don't have to, but it's appreciated. It's Cash App and it's dollar sign outrage ninety five. Any little bit helps to get the stuff, the 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 major book work out published and edited and things of that nature. And I'm working on my new my latest two new books. They just got to get edited and published out. So, with that being said, this has been L. A. Kendrick from the House of Havoc. Remember, check your closets, check the dark recesses and corners of your home, check under your beds. And if you happen to work at night, check your surroundings and check under your car because you never know what's lurking in the dark, waiting to make you a story. And this has been L.A. Kendrick from the House of Havoc, bringing you the heavy.